Hi everyone, welcome to the Mechanics and Materials 1 channel. This is Burak Görmüş and in this video I will be explaining the MATLAB web that is created by me in order to analyze planar truss structures. When you open the app, you can see the home page as shown here. At the left top, there are five tabs. The first one is the home page. The second one is the manual tab, where you can create truss geometries and analyze them. The next one is the book solutions tab. In this tab, you can choose a problem from the textbooks of Hibbler or Beer. When you choose a problem here, the geometry and the boundary conditions will be already assigned. The next one is the material properties tab, in which you can see the characteristics of commonly used materials. And the last tab is the references. Let's start with the manual tab in which you can create truss structures and assign boundary conditions. In pre-process, you will be able to create planar truss structure geometries. The first step is to create the nodes. In order to create nodes, you need to enter the x and y coordinate of this node and push the generate node button. As you can see, as I push the generate node button, the nodes shown in the figure at the right are being generated. The second step is to create the elements. Whilst creating elements, you need to specify the nodes of a particular element. For example, we can connect node 1 and node 2 and create our first element. We can also connect node 2 and node 3 and create our second element. We need to perform this for each element in order to complete our geometry. As you may observe, as we create the elements or nodes, we can see how many of them are created here. One extra feature that can be found is to turn off and on the node tables by using node table switch. We can also do the same thing for elements by using the element table switch. We can also play with the size of the nodes and elements in order to change the view if we want to. The next feature is that we can import a truss geometry from an Excel file. When you want to get an information about the coordinates of the nodes, we can select show node list and for example, the first row has two columns. Since it is the first row, it shows the coordinates of the first node. The first column stands for the X coordinate and the second column stands for the Y coordinate for the node number 1. We can also say show elements and we can figure out the nodes for an element. Exemplifying the first element is between node 1 and node 2. Lastly, we can push to remove all button and clear the geometry that we just created. In the process section, it is possible to assign boundary conditions for chosen nodes. In order to assign a boundary condition, firstly, we need to enter the node number. For example, let's say we have a fixed end at node 1. For a fixed end, we know that the displacements in x and y direction is equal to 0. Therefore, after specifying the node number, I am choosing x as the direction and choosing displacement for the boundary condition type. For the magnitude, it says 0 and I push the apply button. I'm, I'm doing the same thing to enter the boundary condition, that is, the displacement is equal to 0 in the y direction for node 1, after changing the direction as y. Let's also enter the boundary condition information, indicating that node 14 is fixed in the x-direction. And lastly, let's apply a force in the y-direction at node 8, having a magnitude of minus 20 Newton. In order to do that, I'm choosing my direction as y and boundary condition type as force. If you enter a boundary condition that is different than the boundary conditions already assigned, we get a message from the GUI. So let's try it. If I enter a force in the y-direction having a magnitude of 
minus 25 Newton at node 8 and push the apply button, I will be asked whether I want to change this boundary condition or not. If I click yes, the boundary condition is updated as you can see. If the boundary conditions needed to be clear, we can push the clear boundary conditions button and remove all the boundary conditions. In post process, all we need to do is to push the run button and analyze the structure. Before pushing the run button, we should also change the Young's modulus and area if needed. After pushing the run button, if in the left button, you will see the figure that shows the stress magnitude for each element. In the right button, you will see the displacement values shown. These displacement values can be both in x and y direction. For example, if I choose uy from here, we can see the displacement values along y-axis. If you don't want to see the original shape of the structure before deformation, you can turn off the reference buttons. If you don't want to see the node numbers on the figures, you can turn off the node label switch. We can perform the same thing for the element numbers too. Playing bit size will yield a magnified version of the deformation and the structure before deformation will remain on the figure if the reference switches are on. If you choose a button under color bar, it is possible to change the colors on the structure. At the bottom of post process, there is a save figures button and when you push that button, the original geometry for deflection with the boundary conditions as appeared in the right tab and the stress and displacement figure will be saved. Pushing reset views clears the figure and if you want to analyze a new structure, we can click clear everything and start the procedure again. Lastly, let's look at the book solutions tab. In this tab, you can find some of the trust problems given on Hebeler 10th edition and Beer Johnston 9th edition. Firstly, you need to choose a book, then you should select the problem number. After you select the problem, you can see that the geometry and the boundary conditions are already assigned. Further, the Young's modulus and area values are already assigned if they are provided in the problem. So let's try it. Let's look at a problem 14.84 given on Hippler. If you choose this problem, you will see that node 1 corresponds to A and node 2 for B. Node number 3 stands for C and node number 4 stands for the D. When we look at node 3, I mean point C, we have a fixed end, means that it cannot move neither in X nor Y direction. As a result, we have two rectangles below node 3. For node 2, we have a roller allowing the structure to slide in the y direction, but it is fixed in the x direction and we have again have our blue rectangle showing that boundary condition. Lastly, we have two forces at node 1 and node 4 having a magnitude of minus 20 kN. In short, all the boundary conditions are assigned, as you can see on the right tab. Now, all you need to do is to click the run button. After that, in the post process section, you can see the results. Let's also try a problem from Beer Johnston. After choosing the book and choosing the problem number again, all the previous work is removed and the geometry and boundary conditions are assigned again properly. Clicking the run button again, we can examine this problem. 